Hey, if you guys want to learn how to make the project, go ahead and check out the link below. You can go to Skillshare and you'll get the full class project there. You're going to get two weeks free. It's super simple. Check out the description and the comment section for that link. All right, so let's do a quick little walkthrough of this general area here. So you've got this main working area in the middle. If you hover over any given widget, you're gonna get this blue outline and then you're gonna get in the top left corner of any widget, you're gonna get this little menu where you can move the item, you can configure the widget, you can duplicate the widget, which is really useful if you already have a configuration for some widget set up and then you want one that's very, very similar, but maybe a different cut of data. You can just duplicate it and you can also delete it. Know that if you drag the items around, you can find these little um, column and row dockers, just these, like these little areas that you can put these. And right now this is our only widget, so kind of no matter what we do, it's only gonna take up all the screen. But um, just know that you can move that stuff around there. Now uh, on the left hand side, we have our body uh, header and sidebar. So the body is just this main area. The header, which we're gonna make in a second, and the sidebar, which we're gonna make later on, those are gonna be respectively at the top of the dashboard and on the left side of the dashboard. So inside each of these, you can go ahead and you can add an element to them. And by add an element, I mean, anything that is available in this list can be added to that section that if you if you hit that add element button right there. And for the dashboard itself, you've got your general settings, which these are just lots of color and general settings on the dashboard itself. You've got your um, ability to set what subscribers can see that and then your save button. So let's go ahead and we'll start out with a header. So um, Let's go ahead and we'll hit add header. So right here, this just gives us the dashboard uh, default title, but I can change that right here if I want. So I can say, uh, Chicago crime dashboard. And um, I can put in a subtitle, which would, you know, anything I want to put in there. Uh, text color, that's fine. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna actually make this a dark theme in a second and I'll show you how that um, works. There's some general settings right here. I like to keep this header, but you could change that. You could add a logo if you wanted to uh, link to an image, you could put that in there. And uh, you can put in also a background image on this header here as well. So all very useful things here. You could also add um, at the bottom here a link to uh, whatever else you want, but pretty customizable there. Let's hit done and we have that available and see that kind of sits right on top. Now, like I said about the dark theme, let's go ahead and do that by clicking on settings and then going to theme dark and that just changes all the color settings all at once. So we have this nice dark theme look to our entire dashboard application. I just like dark themes, so that's just my preference. You can keep it on light theme if you'd like. Now, let's go ahead and from here, let's go and um, in our header, our header gets a very uh, specific and special set of widgets only to itself that it can uh, add based on if you go and hover kind of over the um, uh, just like we did with this map and it's a little bit different here. You can't move a header a header is static It is fixed to the top so you can't move that around but you can configure it and add These widgets to it. So the one that we're gonna want to add is actually a date selector When we click on that, let me hit done real fast so that you can see it's gonna sit up in the top right hand corner of the actual header widget itself so let's go ahead and configure that real quick and what we'll do is we'll give it a label and we'll say um, select um, uh, date range. And then what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna say the type is gonna be date picker. And that's what type this, this date selector is gonna be. 
and we're gonna say we want a range so we don't want to just select one date we want a range and we're gonna provide it with some default settings for that date range for the front date and the end date so that, that way we have some um, some some values there so people can kind of see oh yes I can tell that uh, the date range that I have available is whatever is showing here to me and and then I'm gonna make sure that I change this uh, this date range widget to just a, uh, a non-generic name here so I'm just gonna say date picker and that'll be like the main date picker for the whole thing so that's fine um, and then I'm gonna change I'm gonna remove the uh, include time off because I just don't really need time for this application so um, or I haven't figured out that I need time for it so now when I when I have this here I'm gonna move myself over to the left hand side so y'all can see if I click right here you'll see that I have two dates and if I were to let's say select um, uh, from this date to this date yeah, if you've ever used any date picker online, it's gonna work very similar to that. You could also type in, like I'm gonna type in like 2014, um, and, and then that, that date will work as well. So I could do something where I go from like um, 2014 to 2016, and you know I can skip through the years or the months very easily, so that's what sort of what we set up now you can see it's not really doing anything at this point in time we're going to want to save you see this little blue icon over here we'll hit save so that way we're just constantly saving this whole project so that way we never get off let's go ahead and we're going to do our first action from this widget so we're just going to hit configure real quick and what we're going to have um, available now is the actions section and it's right under the selection sec section over here on the left hand side when we're configuring this widget and we're going to add an action we're going to filter and then we're going to add a target and then we're going to click on this this little guy right here this is our layer on our map and then we're going to pick our date field now our date field that is the date that the crime was um logged into the data set so what we have now is a situation where this date affects the data that you see on the map so let me demonstrate here real quick so if I change this to um, 2018 you'll see that I have some data but not as much data as I had previously now if I change this month to um, three let's see if I have some some less and it looks like I do actually I'm gonna change this up to 2019 okay cool so it's not a super dramatic change but let me go ahead and change this to like 2012 okay so that's a dramatic change so this date filter is working and you can see maybe if I go um, and I change this to like um, both dates in 2014 and just give it a month time frame you can see that I only have down here one uh, specific feature and if I look here this is the crime within that time range so for the purposes of our map right now we have a working widget that if you change the date of the uh, crime uh, date range that you're trying to look for it will filter all the content within here So this is kind of the basic concept that's going to be applied to a lot of the other widgets probably most all of the widgets that are, are in here and um, This is how you set this one up and I'm just gonna change that real quick uh, 2012 let's see I guess there's not a lot of data in there so let's see I'll just do 15 there we go so now see we got some more um, some more data showing up cool so that's how we set up the date range widget and the header and the general settings there and we have a working widget and right now at this point in time all we have is a map and just this one widget but we do have some functionality so that's pretty cool but we're gonna go and move forward and actually add in some more here in the uh, next steps of this project